today we're going to um, be speaking about secularism and the law. Um, and I'm going to start with um, Feribor's Fairbury, Puya, sorry if I got that wrong, um, from the Iranian Secular Society. Um, Fariboz was born in Iran. He took part in the 1978-79 revolution, but moved to the UK in 1979. He studied economics and politics at Oxford Brooks and Birkbeck College University of London. He founded the Iranian Secular Society, which is quite something, was one of the founding members of the Council of Ex-Muslims in Britain and writes and comments on politics and secularism. He also co-hosts a political social TV magazine called Bread and Roses, which I thoroughly commend to you if you can look it up on the web if you haven't seen it yet. Um, so we'll start with you, Fabrice. Thank you very much, Terry. Um, I just, I'll be brief. I want to make a proposal. I'm sure most of you may agree that there is no such thing as moderate religion. Um, Thank you. I mean, when you first um, time hear the term moderate religion, moderate Islam, like many other people, naturally, you want to, you're curious, you want to know what it really means. Ah, but like me, if you've seen the function of religion as a controlling and limiting human existence, you immediately turn your head and try to see who's speaking. I know that many of us have been careful uh, to separate people from religion and ideology. But I think it pays to reiterate this point, not mixing people with the book. <coughs> we know that uh, religion, conflicting religion, religion as a set of immutable rules and regulations, and body of thought, and mixing them up with people, such as Muslims, Christians, Buddhists, is dangerous. And it's source of right-wing anti-people movement we actually witness in Europe. Religion as an immutable body of thought is given and non-disputable. That's why it has survived for many centuries as it is, despite the changes that human society has gone through. The basic facts of religion has remained the same. The harsh, immutable body of thought has, of course, capacity when, is, when implemented and becomes the rule by which a society governs itself to wreak havoc. We know that Old Testament is full of distasteful commandments, which by just reading them shocks every human being. It advocates genocide, shows how the Lord kills thousands of people for disagreeing with his commands or for committing sins, orders offsprings slaughtered on a promise made to God, <coughs> racism, violence, glorification of war, hatred of others is rife within the framework of the notion of the chosen people or people of God. To implement is only, is, it's only create a fascistic condition for everybody. This feature that we see in Old Testament is actually a running theme in most other religions. You find many examples um, of the same atrocities in Islam New and New Testament. For example, anybody who has accepted this Islam according to its apostasy law cannot leave it alive. For the fact that women are treated unequally in many aspects of Islamic rules, when implement, implemented, creates hell for people's daily lives, and we've experienced that. Is it possible to cuddlify? I know there is no such thing as the word cuddlify. Actually, to moderate these given laws. But at the same time, what about people? I'll come back to that point. 
But what about people? People who are labeled belonging to this religion or the other, see themselves belonging to a religion, can they be moderate? I think that people, by the very nature, and majority of people, when I say people, no matter under what yoke or of religion or ideology, they want to live the very, because of their nature, they are moderate and we revise and justify the way they, they live because they've, they've got to survive and they've got to struggle. And I think that's the important nature of human being. I think moderation comes from human being. Majority of people do actually interpret the religion in their private lives and justify their own way of life. And as such, we, the, uh, they interpret their own religion no matter how in contradictory, illogical, inconsistent the way of life is with the original command. So I think we do have moderate Muslims, Christians, moderate people. Sure, I'll shout in a minute. This is different. Moderate re people are different from moderate religion. There is no such thing. Religion to survive, it must, it, it must hold its ground. If it changes, it withers away. That's why it has to stand where it is. By changing, it won't be the religion that it is. And that's why it has survived for many years. So people need moderation to live. Religion doesn't need moderation. It needs to stay the same to actually to, to survive. I mean, that's the difference between the two. On that point, I thought I'm going to finish this in five minutes. <laughs> Now, on that point, I think the question is, the fact that religion cannot be reformed, where does this phenomenon come from, this mother of religion that we hear every day in the media? I have no time really here, or generally, and as Caroline said, to engage with religi religious establishment about the in inter different interpretation, interpretation of the same, um, the same religion. But I want to explain this point very briefly, that I think we can, we can, we can have a look at the, the fact of moderate religion. You see, as always, moderate or reformed version of religion has emerged historically, if you look at it, when you've had actual version completely implemented and failed. People have seen how terrible a thing it is if religion is implemented. Historically, we could see that. For example, Luther and Lutherians emerged when the power of religion religious state was crumbling. They attacked those aspects that had failed in the case of established Roman Catholicism. The question of indulgences, we know, clerical power, clerical celibacy, use of Latin in church worship, the seven sacraments, and transubstantiation. These were attacked because they wanted to save the actual core of the religion. These are excesses. The purpose of the Reformation, which is apparently seems to be a manual handbook for every ref reformer today, was to save the actual book and the core from social criticism. Reformation attacked the excess, of, uh, the excess to protect the core and tenets of religion from social criticism. 500 years later, the established religion has learned from that lesson and has perfected the art of survival. It now clowns an image of a moderate version of the core. It's part of the state system. On based what we've seen on experience of the last 30 years, we could see where the uh, religion is a key factor in, in the state. We can observe, depending on the specific circumstances, I'll finish Terry in one more minute. Uh, specific circumstances, when all parts or actual harsh controlling system is implemented, it's all this barbaric method. At the same time, immediately, to justify its existence, it automatically creates its own modern image. All re reactionary states now they do that, engage in this. When religious groups take power and completely establish themselves, and they, this mother, uh, moderate image is now repackaged version of itself for public consumption, whether internally within the country, to deflect criticism, or internationally. I think they've perfected that art of government. 
For example, we've seen in the last 35 years in Iran, I've had the direct experience, most of the times we've had moderate image, the same people, the executioners, the people who were actually doing, the, you know, they carry out the most horrific and barbaric act, they change their clothes and suddenly they become pretty moderate president, just for public, con pardon? Sure, yeah, yeah, okay, it's finished. Now, <laughs> the phenomenon has been coupled with growth of international investment in this function of the state, and we have seen the highest organs of the governments from United Nations, departments, all different state departments, they actually pour money into this, creating this image, and that's to, to, for that image to continue. So I think to conclude, we have moderate people because people are inconsistent most of the times, because they want to survive, but we don't have moderate religion. If you hear moderate religion, watch out, people. Watch out.